Hi, this is Dave IZ2UUF. Today we'll see how an antenna tuner works. Stay with me. An antenna tuner is a magic box with two connectors. On one connector you can connect something with a high SWR. On the other connector it will present a low SWR to your radio. How is this possible and how much does it cost in terms of efficiency? This video will be in two parts. In part 1 we'll see how a tuner works. In part 2 how much power is dissipated in the process. There is some debate on the name of this piece of equipment. It is being called antenna tuner, coupler, matchbox, matching network and with other names. I'll use the word tuner because it is the one universally used on our equipment. The tuner doesn't care what you have connected on either sides of its ports. Whether it is a wonderful antenna, a dummy load or whatever else, it will do its best to transfer the power from its input to its output. Be aware that if you connect a transmission line with a very mismatched load at its end, the line itself might dissipate a lot of power. This is not tuner's business and this is not in the scope of this video. To investigate this issue, we start by preparing a reference load that presents high SWR using three inductive resistors in series. On my DMM, it shows a DC resistance of almost uh, 24 ohms. Let's measure this load with a network analyzer. The VNA at low frequency shows a resistance of 23.4 ohm, pretty close to the almost 24 measured by the DMM. At 10.1 MHz, that will be our test frequency for this video, it shows a resistance of about 28 ohms, a bit higher than DC due to the skin effect of the wire that makes the resistor. It shows also a reactance of 208 ohms due to the resistors being inductive. This causes SWR to jump to almost 33. We will never be able to feed this load directly with our radio. To investigate this argument, I prepare the simple L tuner using the common high pass step up layout. The tuner is made of a variable inductor and a variable capacitor. Using my network analyzer, I'm tweaking the inductor and the capacitor to reach SWR as close to 1 as possible. Here we go, we got the perfect tune. Let's now measure the capacitor and the inductor. The capacitor is 67.4 picofarad. The inductor is 0 0.87 microhenry. Why are these exact values able to tune this load at 10.1 MHz? To understand how it works, we have to make a step back to DC. Let's take a random resistor. It is 67.6 .6 ohms. Let's take a second random resistor. It is 326.55 ohms. Now, if we put the two resistors in series, we get about 394 ohms. If we put the two resistors in parallel, we get 56.018 ohms. Where do these series and parallel values come from? Series resistance is obtained by the sum of the values. Parallel resistance is the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of the two resistors involved. When we are transmitting with our radio, we are not generating DC, but AC. In the case of AC, the concept of resistance is expanded to impedance to reflect the extended features of AC circuits. While the resistance describes how a circuit behaves when excited with a DC voltage, the impedance describes how a circuit reacts when excited with an AC voltage at a given frequency. While resistance is described by a single number, an impedance is always expressed by a pair of numbers. We are used to see this pair of numbers named R and X on every antenna analyzer. By the definition of impedance, an ideal resistor will have R greater than 0 and X set to 0. An ideal inductor will have R equal to 0 and X greater than 0. An ideal capacitor will have R equal to 0 and X less than 0. 
Please note that there is no such a thing like a 50 ohm impedance. Impedance is always made of two numbers, and when they say 50 ohm impedance, they implicitly mean R equals 50, X equals 0. The R value is called the resistive part of the impedance, and it is responsible for converting power in other forms, for example in heat. The X value is called the reactive part of the impedance, and it never dissipates power. A purely reactive component, like an ideal inductor or capacitor, having its R value set to zero, will never draw power from the circuit. When it comes to be combined in series or parallel, the impedances are subject to the same rules of resistances. If you combine two impedances in series, you'll get the sum of the two. In parallel, the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals. But how do you add to impedance or calculate the reciprocal? These operations are to be done using the rules of the so-called complex numbers. Complex number operations are defined to receive in input a pair of values R, X and produce as output another pair of values R and X. For example, the addition, used when you put two impedances in series, is quite straightforward. Just add R and X separately. The reciprocal operation, used to calculate parallel impedances, is a bit more complicated. But don't worry. To avoid wasting time with complex math, we'll use an online calculator that executes the various operations with impedances. The link is below in description. Let's now go back to the tuner circuit. We know from a previous measurement with a VNA that at 10.1 MHz our load has impedance R equal 28, X equal 208. We also know from the previous measurements that the inductor is 0.87 microhenry and the capacitor is 67.47 uh, picofarad. In order to proceed, we must know the impedance of all the components involved in the circuit. There are some formulas that allow us to calculate the impedance of a capacitor or the impedance of an inductor at a given frequency, knowing their capacity and inductance. Using the online calculator, let's calculate the impedance of the capacitor at 10.1 MHz. We have R equals 0 and X equals minus 233.55. Here we go. Using again the online calculator, let's calculate the impedance of the 0.87 microenry inductor at 10.1 MHz. We have R equals 0 and X equals 55.2. Okay, now we have all the data. First thing that we notice is that the capacitor and the load are in series. We can apply the rules of impedances in series and replace it with an equivalent impedance. To do so, we can relay again on the online calculator. Since the two impedances are in series, we use the addition button. We got an equivalent impedance of R28 X minus 25.55. We can now replace these two elements with the impedance we have just calculated. Now we observe that the inductor and this new component are in parallel. We use again the online calculator. This time we use the combining parallel function. Check this out. The resulting impedance is R51x0.8. We have now combined together in parallel these two components and we can draw the equivalent circuit. This component is the result of the combination of the capacitor and inductor inside the tuner plus the load we want to feed. The resulting impedance of R51X0.9 is a perfect match for our radio, showing an SWR of just 1.03. So far, we have analyzed the case when the radio is transmitting. But what happens when we are receiving? When transmitting, the generator is the radio, the load is the antenna, and the power goes from left to right. When receiving, the roles are inverted. The antenna is the generator, the radio receiver is the load, and the power goes from right to left. Let's try to resolve the circuit the other way around. 
First, we note that our receiver and inductor are in parallel. As we did before, we can replace them with their parallel equivalent. The equivalent impedance of the two is R27.5 x 24.9. Now, we can note that this element is in series with the capacitor. Let's add them together. We have a final impedance of R27.5 x minus 208.7. Why is this value interesting? The maximum power transfer theorem states that to have maximum power transfer, the load impedance must be the complex conjugate of the generator impedance. The complex conjugate means that if the generator has impedance Rx, the load must be R minus X. In this case, we have the antenna acting as a generator with impedance R28 X 208 and the receiver, combined with the tuner components, acting as the load with an impedance of R27.5 X minus 208.7. It's an almost perfect complex conjugate for the antenna impedance. In other words, the same tuner settings are able to adapt the impedance in both directions. This explains why when we add a tuner to a random wire, we receive much stronger signals. So, are tuners actually fooling our radios uh, to think that a bad antenna is a good one? Well, this point of view has more to do with morality rather than technicality. So everyone is free to have uh, his own opinion. However, those believing that the tuner is fooling their radio should also accept that the wall charger is fooling their smartphones to think that their home AC mains are 5 volt DC supplies. Their bike gear is fooling their legs to think a slope is actually a flat road, and so on. In other words, a life spent being fooled by things. In conclusion, a tuner converts voltage and current ratio and phase to match producer and consumer. It does so by applying the complex number math of a series and parallel circuits in AC. The tuning is bidirectional. If the transmitter is matched to the antenna in TX, the receiver will be matched to the antenna in RX. An ideal tuner, being made of reactive components like capacitors and inductors, does not dissipate power. Real tuners do dissipate some power, but this will be the topic of part 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. In part 2, we'll see how much power the tuner dissipates and how to get the best out of it. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when a new video comes out. 73, and see you next time.